So in this theme of experiential experiences, sorry for repeating the same word, we're going to have Mary Kate talk about her experiences as a teacher and experiences with education and identities of love and seeing all of God's children. So give it up for Mary Kate Clifton. Get mic'd up kind of gal. I'm just kind of loud. So as any good teacher would, here is my plan. Right here on this nice little post-it note. Um, so I'm going to set my objective, right? We're going to set this objective. So we're talking about this little book I wrote. The little children's book about the Pentecost. My dear friend Amy is passing one out for you all. You can look at it while I'm talking. I really want you to take it with you. But if it's going to end up in your recycling bin, leave it in the background your way out. Uh, so what? We're going to physically talk about what this physical book looks like. We're going to talk about why I wrote this book. Where did it come from? And we're going to talk about our implications for us as Catholics and our identity and kind of what that means. So to start off, I'm just going to kind of walk you through the book here. So, obviously there's no color. Plot twist, you all get to add the color. It's a coloring book! Yay! Yay. Um, so if you go through each page, it kind of goes through the story of the Pentecost over here. And on this side over here, it looks like a little fill in the blank thing. So we're calling that our social emotional learning page. And we'll talk more about what that means in a couple minutes. So it just goes through the whole story, page by page, story, social, emotional page. And the idea here is to kind of illustrate that feeling or emotion that you're identifying from the story. Is that fair? Does that sound fair to everyone? Okay. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about where this book came from. I'm gonna tell you the birth story of this book. One day, I am walking through Damon, and my favorite 98 year old nun stops me in the middle of Damon. It was Mary Kate. Sister Jean, what, 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 how can I help you? And Sister Jean goes, you know what you should do? And I was like, what should I do, Sister Jean? She goes, you need to write a children's book about a Bible story. And I was like, okay, I'll write a children's book about a Bible story. Anything you want me to do, Sister Jean? And Sister Jean goes, you know how I thought of this? And I was like, Sister Jean, how did you think of this? And she goes, well, I was being interviewed by this woman who was writing a children's book on the Golden Gate Bridge. And you know what, Mary Kate? What, Sister Jean? I walked across the Golden Gate Bridge the day it opened. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. that's the first story of this book. Um, so why? Why are we talking about the Pentecost? Right, so we have this idea of this diverse identities in the church. And I couldn't really think of a better story, right, to bring out these diverse identities in the church than all these people standing around, speaking all different languages, being really confused, and in the end being like, this works, this works for me. So that's a little bit why we're talking about the Pentecost. Uh, the coloring book part is because First, I was just going to do a regular book. And then I realized, one, that art is really hard and not one of my gifts. And then two, I was really thinking about it. And right, if we're subscribing to this idea that there's all these different identities and this diversity right, in our one Catholic church, then we should let people identify themselves and color their own picture. right? So now they're bringing in their own identities and what they want it to look like. Another aspect of the coloring book, at first it's going to be a multicultural book for a really long term, but so, um, yeah, so the coloring part is also about children seeing themselves in the story, right? Who had a children's Bible? Who grew up with a nice children's Bible with lots of pictures in it? Whose Bible had all white people in it? <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Well, this church is for everyone, and I was tired of my students of color not being able to see themselves in their books, in these experiences, right? This church is for everyone, and we want everyone to see themselves 
in the story. Because they're all part of the story. This is everyone's story. So children can color it however they want, color their story, make their own stories. Um, and that's what kind of that's all about, right? When we relate to a story, right, we better understand it, we better connect to it, we better respond to it. So that's why I wanted to include everyone in the story. So have any of you ever heard of social emotional learning? Social workers, psych majors, teachers alike, right? So this idea of social emotional learning is part of our academic content in schools is teaching children, how do I identify my emotions? How do I deal with situations when I'm confused or scared or need help? I'm like, how do I work with these emotions I have? Because I don't know how you all grew up, but my social emotional learning, my Irish Catholic household was less feelings, more whiskey. <laughs> I don't know. So, you know, study show, we teach kids how to identify what they're feeling and work with it. They're just better people, right? All your good friends know how to talk about their feelings, all your best friends, right? So when we take each part of the story and ask students these questions to identify what they think other people are feeling, feeling right? The sense of empathy and identifying what they're feeling and who can I go for? Who do I go to if I need help, right? Setting these things early on are going to help our students in the long run. And in terms of the Lexile level, right, this reading level of this book, it's a, if you notice, the words are pretty simple. Like, you can be like, well, she really did a disservice to this story. Well, you know, the purpose is not to turn these kids into Bible scholars. That is not my job, right? The purpose is to pique the interest, right? And if you can't understand the words, are you going to be interested? No. 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 So we want kids to understand and to relate. And that's why we have a social emotional learning coloring book about the Pentecost. <laughs> so what does this mean? How do we move forward? What do we do with this piece of paper that I hope is not viewed as just some dead trees? Right? So it's important to start the conversations, right? I think a valid academic conversation is in. Should we be portraying Bible characters that look like us or look like the factual people who are there? Well, we can't start that conversation unless we're interested in it, unless we have people who care about it, right? So in order for people to care about it, you've got to first be interested in it. So that's why we're starting here, and we can use it as a scaffolding, as a building block to bring people up here. Um, and I think overall it's just really important for our brothers and sisters in the church who are often not included in those images, in those stories to feel included. And that is the story of the social emotional learning Pentecost colored book. <laughs> <laughs>